And I am done. So, I just finished up reading The Wandering Inn by Pirate Abba. I wanted to give you my unedited thoughts upon finishing the book, which was just now. Uh, this book was an easy 5 out of 5 for me. I absolutely adore this book. And I didn't think I would. I really thought this was going to be something that I didn't really get into. And I need to give a lot of background onto this book before I delve into it, because it's very different than the other books that I've reviewed in the past. So I had a friend on Goodreads uh, that I've uh, I've been friends with, like one, probably my first friend on Goodreads, and her tastes really line up with mine. And every book she's recommended for me ends up being awesome. She's who got me onto John Gwen, um, and John Gwen's like my second favorite author of all time now. And she she recommended the Wandering Into Me, which is a totally different genre of book. It's a web serial turned into a book, which already didn't really excite me. And it's crazy long. It's It adds 40,000 words per week, and it's at 9 million words right now. Um, they haven't released all the books. They've only released a small fraction of the books because the, you can read it for free uh, on her website. But she's now going through and doing some editing. And I say she. I don't know if Pyra Abba is a boy or a girl. I, for some reason, I think of it as a woman in my mind because she writes uh, women characters as her main. Um, but she comes out with 40,000 words per week. So in a 9 million words series, put that into context, Wheel of Time, which everybody thinks of as one of the longest fantasy series of all time, is 4.4 million words. So this is double the length and growing at a huge rate. Um, but she, she's going back and editing these books and releasing them in volumes. And I think there's like seven volumes out right now, If and they're all like a thousand plus pages. But the series itself would need probably 30 or 40 books to get to the length, maybe maybe it's like 30, uh, to get to the length of what, um, to get caught up. So uh, a lot to be released, but man, this was a good book. And I, I really thought I wouldn't like it. it. It looks really weak. It looks like something for like a high schooler, which no offense, but I'm not big into the, uh, uh, in, into younger books. And it read like that when I first started reading and I got really worried. Um, it was super low stakes, but as I started reading it more, I, I realized that what it really reminded me of is Legends and Lattes, which I loved. I think I, I gave Legends and Lattes a four and a half out of five. It was a wonderful book, super low stakes about a woman orc who opens up in a coffee shop. Well, this book is about a, a young woman who opens up an, an inn, uh, but there's a twist and the twist is that she is... A, a regular human from Earth, a uh, regular uh, kid, or I think she's a young adult at this point, and she gets transported into this other world. And she has to deal with these w with the realities of going into a fantasy world, and she sees this empty inn, and she starts to, she takes it over and learns about why it's empty and starts to start a career for herself. And nothing major happens for a long portion of this book, but it's fun. It's It's... I really enjoyed like waking up in the morning, drinking my coffee, having this feel-good book that I'm reading, and I and I really liked it. But I kept thinking, how is it going to keep up this slow pace for dozens and dozens of books? Because that, you know, there's only it feels like that sort of book should be a little bit small. But this book alone was over it was like 1,200 pages. When I got to like the second third of the book, I realized what this book was turning into was an epic fantasy, a true epic fantasy. And it started to change the tone a little bit, which I thoroughly enjoyed. And it shocked me how good this writer is, that they're able to kind of take these different type of genres, uh, all within the fantasy world, and blend them very seamlessly into the same book. And over the last third of the book, maybe the last quarter, it turned into a very intense, some horror aspects that were beautifully done, completely changed the tone of the book for the better. Um for the fact that it gave you so many different aspects of fantasy. So it was wonderful. I, I loved virtually everything about this book. The world is so easy to get lost in. It's one of the better fantasy worlds I've read about. And I it's hard to, to, to explain what it is about a fantasy world and world building that you enjoy. It's one of those things that you can feel it more than you can explain it. But I think the best way I can do it is to say a really good world building is when you are lost in that world that you can 
personally visualize everything about what's going on. The characters, the landscapes, the geography, and the cities. And, and it does it, and that doesn't mean that you just throw a bunch of words on paper like Robert Jordan, who I also love, but I thought he did too much explanation. This is a really nice blend, and you just... I know what that inn looks like. I'm sure everybody has a different view of what it is. Uh, I, I know what the town looks like. I know what these people look like. And it's awesome. When I look up some fan materials for these like fan-made maps, we're focused. It, it's a big area that we're talking about that happens in the scope of these books and multiple POVs. Um, and But the world itself is 50 times bigger than the events of this book. So it's exciting. I love when a book takes a slice out of a bigger world and it, because it makes it feel real because that's what real life is. Um, you know, I, I don't love when the entire world is explained at once. It makes it feel small. This feels bigger than our world and, and I love it for that. Um, the fantasy elements of this book start off so off-putting and I adore them by the end of this book because she doesn't this main character doesn't just go to a fantasy world. They go to Dungeons and Dragons, where she finds, and I'm not spoiling anything by saying this, but when she falls asleep after doing a bunch of tasks the first day, like collecting um, food and trying to keep herself alive, she goes to sleep, and all of a sudden you get a notification that she has leveled up her innkeeper class. Literally leveled up. And she got some skills from that. And it's straight out of Dungeons and Dragons. And it feels weird. And, but what's nice about it is she feels it's weird too. And she's trying to understand this and figure out what this means. And it, it's fun. It's a nice little twist on somebody who's going through this experience with you. And you can see it from their eyes. And while it felt weird, later on in the book, it's really exciting watching these characters level up. Running into a character that's level 44 and they're just super impressive gives you more information about people. It's fun watching them level up and get these different classes and get these different skills. Um, it's just really enjoyable. And I I feel like it could get old if I read a bunch of books that had this, but the fact that I've never read a book that tried to do this before, and I'm sure there's a lot that do. I haven't experienced them before, so it was a really nice, fresh change of pace for me. Um, the characters themselves, this in large part is a character book. The characters are written beautifully. I love the characters in this book. That there are many different um, cultures and different uh, like creatures. You know, there's an ant class of people that looked at these huge, strong ants. There's these kind of like mini little dragon people that walk around. Uh, there's the traditional uh, trolls, uh, trolls, or goblins, and. But there's a lot of other things, too, that maybe are prevalent in Dungeons & Dragons. I haven't played Dungeons & Dragons since I was a little kid. Um, but that feel very unique. And it's fun having that mix of things that feel um, like that you understand them and, and some that you have to learn about. And especially towards the tail end of the book when these crazy beasts start coming out and this, these huge battles that happen. And it's just amazing. So... I am shocked at how good this book was. I mentioned at my last video when I reviewed Dread God in the Cradle series that it was probably going to be my um, my least or, or my uh, what, what do I call it my most disappointing book of the of the month. This is om almost guaranteed going to be my most uh, appreciated book of the month, the biggest surprise of the month, um, and I'm I'm hooked. I am thoroughly worried at how long this book series is, though. But from everything I've read, I've, I've went on the Discord and talked to some of the people about it, and it has this huge community um, that try to support this author to do uh, what they love to do by giving her a lot of money on Patreon um, to allow them to write at the pace that they do. But from everything I see in reading some reviews, the books get better. So I'm all in. I can't wait. You should give this book a try. But... Unfortunately, I don't think you're going to know whether you like or don't like this book until you finish this 1,200-page book because it changes. You get to learn about these characters more. Um, a lot of books you read, you know in the first 100 or so pages if you're going to enjoy this or not. Not the case here. Um, if you pick up this book, which I strongly encourage you to, it's very cheap on Amazon. It's $4.99 for a huge book. Uh, but you can also read it for free uh, on the website if you enjoy that. I like reading on my Kindle, so I buy the books. Um, but give it a try. Read the first book. I hope you enjoy it, and I hope you enjoyed this uh, this review.
Have a good one.